meeting, but a meeting that the public can attend. I'm Ros Jones, Mayor of Doncaster, and I'd like to welcome you all to today's meeting. Before we commence proceedings, I would like to outline the domestic arrangements for the meeting. We are not expecting a fire practice today. If the alarm sounds, please leave the building and assemble the other side of the fountain in front of Cass. This meeting will be recorded and published on the Council's website. By entering the Council Chamber, you are accepting that you will be recorded and your images will be retained and broadcast by the Council. If anyone intends to record today's meeting, please ensure this does not disturb the conduct of the meeting and please ensure that your mobile phones are switched to silent mode. Thank you. I'll now commence the meeting. Apologies for absence. I've received apologies from councillors Lanny May Ball, Nigel Ball, Rachel Blake and Joe Blackham. Are there any further apologies, please? No? Thank you. Moving on to item two, exclusion of the public and press. The no items on the agenda where the public and press are to be excluded. Is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Item three, public statements and questions. We have no public questions or statements today. Item four, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest, please? So there's no indication of any declarations. Should you see one further, please contact governance officer to obtain declarations form. Item five, decision records from the meeting held on the 15th of February. These have been previously circulated and are for noting only. Agreed? Agreed. Item six, quarter three, finance and performance improvement report. I'll now invite Councillor Phil Cole, cabinet member for finance and trading to introduce this item. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm pleased to introduce the Quarter 3 Finance and Performance Report for 22-23, the period from October to December 2022, and to outline how the Council continues to deliver effective services in the face of considerable challenges and uncertainties. The rising cost of living continues to impact our borough, especially in terms of energy, food, material costs, and people in business face difficult choices going forward. The Council is not immune from these rising inflationary pressures, in addition to facing increasing service cost pressures, particularly in high cost service areas such as children's social care placements and home to school transport. Along with the rest of lo the local government sector, there are some real challenges for the Council in regards, with regards to managing its costs and delivering the savings required. The financial pressures are ongoing and two days ago, the Council meeting agreed a balanced budget for 23-24 that deals with those estimated pressures. At the end of quarter three, however, a £7.8 million overspend is forecast uh, for the uh, year 2022-23. Additional spending controls have been put in place to improve this position, but it is likely that the remaining overspend will need to be funded by reducing our earmarked reserves held for transformation. That said, our performance for quarter three remains predominantly positive. It is worth noting from the report that our efforts include a continued examination of all options to retain a functioning airport in Doncaster, including working with parties interested in purchasing Doncaster Sheffield Airport and the surrounding site. A very high standard of collection of household waste and recycling has been achieved. During this quarter, £330,000 has been made available for small to medium-sized enterprises to access low-carbon grants. Work continues on the Education and Skills 2030 programme, and in this quarter we have drafted a high-level strategic action plan. And at the end of quarter three, investment into Doncaster stood at £90.15 million, with £49.5 million of new inward investment facilitated by Business Doncaster. And finally, a strong focus has brought about improvements in waiting lists for open adult social care needs assessments. Despite those achievements, we continue to review activity to improve our challenging areas of performance. For example, 
persistent absence in secondary schools has risen significantly. The performance in relation to the timeliness of education, health and care plans for children with special educational needs, which declined in quarter three. The number of people supported by council reablement services who are still at home 91 days after discharge from hospital has declined in the last quarter. And also the number of children and young people in out of authority residential placements has grown significantly year on year during the last three years. So to sum up, the council is operating in really challenging circumstances and despite this is maintaining a delivery of service at or above the service standards set at the beginning of the year. This is to the credit of Doncaster Council's hard-working and committed staff and for that I want to take the opportunity to thank them on behalf of the Mayor and Cabinet for that ongoing support and with that Mayor Jones I commend this report to Cabinet. Thank you Councillor Cole. Colleagues, any questions or statements please? Thank you. Um, just want to raise two points uh, on the report, a welcome report. Um, the first one on page 13. Um, would like to see an improvement and an increase in the completion of the Environmental Committee and Regulation permit visits with DEFRA, which is within the required time scale, uh, timescales. Also on, on, on a positive note, um, page 14 on, on veterans, um, welcome the 39% increase in the number of veterans supported within the community. Uh, two employment events have taken place in quarter three. Um, the Veterans Covenant work is a statutory responsibility of the Council. I'm also pleased that we have a successful in employing a veteran coordinator which will provide an increased quality service to our, to our armed forces, veterans commitment <coughs> and to their families. Thank you. Andrea. Thank you. Um, just a couple of observations. I think it's absolutely tremendous how well we have performed with the removal of, of, of fly tipping. Um, what's contained within the report is, is really quite remarkable, especially in the context of the fact that we're looking here at um, an achievement of 97% on the removal of 1,132 incidents of fly tipping. So, um, so that's brilliant. And I, I know that um, in the ward I represent, people get desperately upset about this so it's 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 really pleasing that it's removed and just lamentable that we still continue to have quite so many incidents um, I'd also like to comment in relation to safeguarding I think what's contained within uh, paragraph 55 um, about what we are doing and how we are acknowledging we need to see further improvement um, is, is, is also really pertinent because our first responsibility is of course to keep our residents safe Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Jane. Yes, Mayor. Um, I'm delighted to see within the report also um, the applications for green flags in our parks, which is um, a high achievement, and that we've actually um, submit making another submission for Townfields Park uh, to be awarded the green flag status. This is a great achievement our open green spaces. Bill. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to thank my colleagues for their um, comments. It, it's, uh, and it's a credit to us that we um, not only celebrate the good things that we achieve, but we do look at the challenges and where we perhaps need to improve our performance. Um, uh, Councillor Hulbrook's comment about um, environmental permitting regulation permit visits. Absolutely right, and I hope that work is being undertaken to um, improve that. Um, the inspections of our playgrounds, we want our children to always be safe in playgrounds. We don't want any of them to become dangerous places because of either neglect or because of vandalism. Um, uh, safeguarding, nothing could be more fundamental than making sure that um, Adults um, in all circumstances and settings are protected and safeguarded. Um, and I would say that um, uh, on the observation about the improvement in our performance on fly tipping, 
in 2021, shortly after the election, it was a very clear priority of the mayor to make sure that there was an investment in um, additional fly tipping teams uh, and a reorganisation to achieve. Um, and, and during the throughout the pandemic, there was a, a huge surge in uh, all over the country in fly tipping. And actually, the the fact that our teams have got on top of that and responded so quickly is a real credit to them. Um, I hope I've picked up every. Um, oh, and on the green flags um, for parks, um, I think the uh, the standard of our parks is getting better year on year. Um, I think we should be very pleased about it, and we also have a future parks program that I know the mayor has embraced and is keen uh, to develop some of our um, uh, woodland park areas um, for the future. So I think that's a very promising uh, development, and I thank my colleagues. I would also like to point out uh, where we're now seeing uh, the ratings for our principal roads not requiring major maintenance, reaching our target of 98%. Non-principal roads not requiring major maintenance, again, achieving the target of 98%. And estate roads in good or fair, achieving the, the target, in fact, slightly above at 82%, with the target being 81%. And this is actually in no means feat to the amount of extra monies we were able to put in in last year in order to pick up. But let's not hide. We are still not given sufficient funding from central government to maintain highways in the state that they really require. And although we support and delight active travellers here in Doncaster, we need the major roads actually being maintained as well. Glyn. Yes, thanks, Chair. Yeah, uh, if I can uh, also raise, as my colleagues have done, the uh, number of fly tips uh, investigated and removed within seven days from public areas. Uh, those figures are, are, are outstanding, to be fair. And it's a really bittersweet moment that we've got here. It, it's, it's sweet that we are able to react quickly to these uh, antisocial acts but it's really clear that was lots and lots of work to do with with people that still commit environmental crime uh, such as uh, dumping uh, and fly tipping uh, waste uh, totally indiscriminately and inappropriately affecting both the mental and physical health of people within our communities uh, you know the but going back, the figure of 97% is, is an excellent figure, and it's been brought about by reducing the backlog of fly tipping, intensive resources, that certainly, as my colleague Councillor Cole mentioned, that the Mayor committed uh, some, some time ago uh, in 2021, that said we, you know, we would commit to that. So I've, I've really got to say it, it's pleasing to see such a good reaction to it it's really bitter and disappointing that we have to react in this way thank you chair thank you Glyn. i would also add what we could do with that money if we was not having to actually use those resources and actually ensure that all our streets are cleaner because the resources used picking up live tipping of course means we've less resources to use elsewhere and given the massive amounts of budgetary pressures we've got each and every time, it would be great if we was able to stop this forever. And therefore, it's, you're right, Lynn, it requires educating from the source, but also people actually being aware of what's happening and informing us when they can see people dumping inappropriately, because whilst ever they're doing that, other people are having to live within this mire. So with that, I'm going to move on to the recommendations within the report, and that is that the Mayor and Members of Cabinet are asked to approve and comment on quarterly performance and financial information, including approved environments per fi financial procedure rules as detailed in Appendix A, finance profile of the report, note the allocations of block budgets in the capital programme as detailed in Appendix A, finance profile of the report, in accordance with financial procedure rules, approve the payments to St Ledger Homes 
a part of the contract management arrangement for the cost of additional inflationary costs over and above those budgeted 1.15 million within the housing revenue account with a reconciliation at year end to ensure any surplus is returned to the council. Note the introduction of a new fee for planning site histories as referred to in paragraphs 152 to 155 in the report and note the increase to cremation fees as referred to in paragraphs 156 157 of the report and approve the use of earmarked reserves as detailed in paragraphs 173 176 of the report to re fund the remaining overspend balance at outturn. Colleagues, do you agree those recommendations? Agreed. Seconded. Approved, therefore. We move on to item seven, which is St. Ledger Homes of Doncaster Limited, performance and delivery update four to three. I will now invite the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Glyn Jones, Cabinet Member for Housing and Business, to introduce the report. Thank you, Chair. Uh, as part of the management agreement, St. Ledger is required to send a quarterly performance report and an annual value for money statement report, both of which are presented to us today. This report deals with quarter two of 2022-23. St. Ledger Homes continues to see considerable pressure in various areas of housing activity. Two examples, the number of people that approach uh, St. Ledger fearing and becoming homeless are extremely high and the demand for repairs has remained high since the end of the COVID pandemic, with a further spike as a result of the publicity surrounding the damp, mould and condensation issues. These are considerable national trends. Within the report, uh, it is apparent that there remains some room for improvement in some areas, but it's also evident that there are some excellent performance and I'm pleased to be able to advise that the value for money results are the best levels of performance ever recorded by St. Ledger. St. Ledger <coughs> continues to face considerable challenges, but I'm pleased to see that they continue to do all they can to support both their existing tenants and the people of Doncaster during times of crisis. As a council, we will continue to do all we can to support St. Ledger. That is why we have continued to invest substantially in our council housing stock with energy efficiency improvements and our council house build programme that will see over 600 new properties over the course of the programme. As I've advised previously, the Mayor set St. Ledger some very challenging targets wanting St Ledger to push as hard as they could to deliver excellent services for Doncaster tenants. If I just run, some, uh, run through some of the key indicators that are off target, KPI 2, void rent loss, this is one element of total arrears. Measured nationally, top quartile performance on this indicator is 0.94%. Our target of 0.5% is almost half of that. So whilst this measure is off target, it is pleasing to see that performance has improved consistently since the summer of 2020 and at 0.67% sits comfortably within the best 20% of performers nationally. KPI 3 concerns the average number of days a property is void. Again, we set St Ledger a challenging target of 20 days. Last year, national top quartile performance was 28.2 days. Again, St Ledger's performance has consistently improved since quarter one of 2020 and now stands at 26.8 days. Some way to go to get it to the excellent standard we want to see, but very good performance when benchmarked against other landlords. In terms of performance, taking into account the cost to deliver service, as I've said, the results are the best posted by St. Ledger. The best place to see this 
is in section 10 of the value for money statement or page 99 of today's papers. When compared to 20 Almos and local authority peers, the basket of measures we review are now all in the relatively high performance and low cost quadrant of the graph. When we compare this with a larger sample of 90 housing providers on the following page, the same is true with one exception. Satisfaction with the neighbourhood, uh, where this performance does uh, fall uh, just a little lower. So overall, an excellent report and great, ev great evidence that despite us having the ninth lowest rents in the country, we can still expect to see good quality, high performing services. I commend this report, Chair. Thank you, Glyn. Colleagues, any questions or statements? Phil? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, just to commend a, an a excellent report, I, I really think that uh, time after time, um, St. Ledger Homes shows that it's a, a thoroughly professional um, and well-organised and well-managed um, organisation that, that provides a really good service for our tenants. Um, I should say also, the um, just to comment on KPI 6, the number of homeless preventions, there, there was a surge in the numbers of people requiring help. Um, uh, and these are people at times of real crisis where they've nowhere to turn and you know someone's able to hold out a hand and and help uh, avoid them being in a parlous situation and i i think it's really commendable that st ledger homes um is able to respond so effectively when people are really up against it um i would ask a question about um kpi 7 which is the number of complaints upheld as percentage of all interactions um i'll start by the idiot question which is what's an interaction um, I'm always curious about that. Um, but uh, I think on a serious note, I was a little concerned that the number of complaints has risen. And I know that people say that circumstances around the country means that other housing organisations face similar pressures. But I think uh, I was worried about that rise in the number of complaints and that, you know, just over a quarter of them are upheld. So I wondered if you've analysed which areas of St. Ledger Homes delivery is is creating more of those complaints than other areas. I hope that's not too obscure a question. No, thank you, Councillor Cole. That's that's a very clear question, uh, and I think you're quite right to highlight concerns around complaints. Uh, just to put it in context, we have seen something like a 15% increase in the number of complaints we've received this year compared to last. Uh, I've just got some data in from national benchmarking and nationally we're seeing a 50% increase across the country. That's largely on the back of significant increases in the volumes of requests for service, particularly repair service, and we're seeing something like a 25-26% year uh, increase compared to um, um, COVID times, or just pre-COVID times, sorry. Um, nationally, we're seeing something similar. The figures are showing about a 30% increase in, in repairs. So actually, in terms of some of our increases, they're lower than the national expectations. In terms of your specific question about an interaction, an interaction is a, a significant contact with a customer. So it could be a phone call, it could be an email, or it could actually be a repairs visit. Uh, so, so it's that high volume of things. No, not every conversation an estate officer has with a tenant as they're walking down the street is going to be recorded as an interaction, but any major contact would be. Um, and what I would say in terms of um, where we're seeing the, the, the most significant issues, it'll be no surprise that it's in the high volume areas. So it is in predominantly in repairs. Something like three quarters of all our complaints relate to repairs. Um, and we have had uh, as I said, a significant increase of about 25-26%. Uh, and as a result of that, we've had some backlogs in getting to repairs. So um, um, I'm really conscious that actually the complaints issue needs really uh, driving down and, and analysing to a great extent. And there's a number of things going on, not, not just about looking at how we 
can improve the handling of complaints, but how can we improve the root causes of those complaints in the first place? And you'll be aware because of conversations elsewhere about the work that we're doing to combine our current responsive repair service and our scheduled repairs to ensure that the high volume responsive repairs that we get most complaints about are getting a better service. We're going effectively to one service as opposed to two fragmented services, which leads to lots of passing of the book between different, different parts of the business. So we're, we're combining it and we're trying to really ensure that we're getting a more rapid response to the high volume service, the high volume requests for service that need more intensive and quicker action, as opposed to the things that perhaps can be wait three or four months, because they're you know, a squeaky door or whatever. Uh, so it's predominantly in, repair, uh, in repairs, and we are taking considerable action to shake up the, the ways in which we deliver our, our repair service. So I'm optimistic that the numbers we will see will start to fall from what I've got to admit is a high volume, uh, and certainly a much higher volume than we want to see. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully the Repairs Excellence Service will help drive down those number of complaints and lead to more effective outcomes. Thank you very much. Andrea. Thank you. Yes, I, I think there is so much here that you should feel very proud of, about. And, uh, you know, it's, it's incredibly pleasing. A little snippet that stood out to me was the fact that uh, no child in Doncaster were accommodated by home options, spent Christmas or New Year in a hotel. Tremendous. Thank you. I've got a couple as well, and uh, I never fail to mention Boyd's, but I am delighted to see the numbers uh, actually going down in the number of days it's taking. However, as always, really would be great to see us actually achieve a very stretched target, I accept, but we need to do it because whilst ever the avoid property is a home someone hasn't got. I next go on to the number of a households in bed and breakfast accommodation and again I'm delighted to see the numbers coming down with how resources have been stretched as the market has developed and the private sector offering less homes and more people becoming homeless. Looking at the percentage of local expenditure again matching all targets and really this is about stimulating our local economy and a pound spent around Doncaster actually helps stimulate the economy and uh, delighted to see that you're still achieving the outcome. However, going on to the numbers of tenant satisfaction levels and tenant satisfaction with property conditions, they re really do raise areas of concern. And I know that you're looking at all different ways to do it, but the percentages now are going down. If you look at last year's outturn, you look at this year to date, it is not where we want to see it. And therefore, we welcome everything you can do to actually bring about improvements in how you design to deliver the service. With that, uh, I not anyone else with any comments or questions? No? So with that, therefore, <coughs> I will read uh, the recommendations and it's that Cabinet note the progress of St Ledger Homes of Doncaster performance outcomes and value for money statement and the contribution St Ledger Homes of Doncaster makes to supporting Doncaster Council's strategic priorities. Is that moved, colleagues? Yeah. Is it seconded? Therefore, it is approved. We now move on to item eight, which is adult social care market sustainability plan and provider fee rates 23-24. I now invite Councillor Andrea Robinson, Cabinet Member for Adult Social Care, to introduce this item. Thank you, Mayor. Doncaster people are supported by adult social care in a range of settings. The largest proportion receive care and support in their own home. Others need to move into a care home or perhaps into extra care housing or supported living. All of these people depend on care and support to ensure a decent quality of life and access to the opportunities that many of us take for granted. I want to pay tribute to the many staff who work in organisations across Doncaster, supporting people day in and day out in their own homes, in care homes, in supported living and in extra care housing. Without their compassion and their skill, 
the lives of a huge number of Doncaster people and their families would be all the poorer. The City of Doncaster Council has been running a Proud to Care campaign to encourage more people to work in adult social care and make this difference with all the job satisfaction that comes with it. We're also putting our money where our mouth is. I am delighted to recommend this report proposing significant increases in the fee rates paid by the Council to Doncaster's care providers. For example, the rate we propose to pay for care in a person's own home will increase by almost 26% from April. The rate we propose to pay for support in a care home will increase by over 22%. These increases, well above the current rate of inflation, will enable good quality care for Doncaster people supported by a workforce with greater reward for the essential work that they do. As a council, we have received some extra money from national government to support increases in fee rates, but nowhere near enough to cover all these proposals. This council has prioritised funding from other sources to illustrate our commitment to people and families in Doncaster who, because of age, illness or disability, need reliable and good quality care and support more than ever. We very much hope that this government, or a future one, will develop a clear long-term funded strategy for adult social care that will support the work that this council is doing on a sustainable basis. In the meantime though, I am pleased to commend this report to Cabinet. It prioritises the needs of Doncaster people receiving care and support and also protects the well-being of frontline staff across the adult social care sector. It shows that the City of Doncaster Council are serious when we say that we are proud to care. Thank you, Mayor. Colleagues, any questions or statements? I have one, and I will refer people to page 121, the workforce challenges. It is acknowledged that a key challenge for all areas of social care market at the current time and within the next one to three years is the availability of workforce. The market has seen a significant challenge to recruitment and retention emerge from the COVID pandemic and continue into recovery. Doncaster Council have invested in supporting the market through the Proud to Care campaign, the Social Care Academy, and the care certificate induction. Doncaster Council will continue to work with the market to ensure that the workforce support provided is timely and effective, but we all know how difficult it is to continue to recruit to these vital posts that we have, and also the additional costs it is giving us as an authority when we're having to move very scarce resources, but we believe in ensuring that we look after social care, both in adults and children, and therefore I think the workforce needs to be identified as one of the challenges that the team face over these next few years. Colleagues, any other questions or statements, please? Therefore, if not, I will go on to read out the recommendations, and that is Cabinet approved the 23-24 fee rate increases as set out in Appendix 1 of the report. In addition, approve the fees used in the calculation of the financially assessed client contributions as detailed in paragraph 49 of the report. To approve Doncaster's market sustainability plan as attached at appendix two of the report. And to note the consultation feedback from Doncaster's care providers as set out in the appendices three and four of the report. Colleagues, uh, can this be moved? Seconded. Therefore, the recommendations are agreed. That concludes the items of business on the agenda today. I would like to thank everyone for their attendance and input. I will now close the meeting. Thank you.